This is a Redmi Note 13 and here is the Samsung Galaxy A15. Which is better? I'll help you decide and so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. First off, let's talk pricing. You get the Redmi Note 13 4G here for 207,000 naira, roughly $170 for the 6 gigs, 128 gigs memory configuration. And you get the Galaxy A15 for 190,000 naira or $160 for 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. That's about a $10 difference in price. Out of the box with the Redmi Note 13, you get the smartphone itself, a 33 watt charger, a TPU case for protection, but for Sammy, you just get the phone and a USB cable. Of course, SIM ejectors and paperwork would all be there. So as far as accessories, the Redmi is the clear winner. Of course, design is subjective here. And for me, I love the design on the Samsung Galaxy A15. It has this premium aesthetics, solid build, and feels sturdy in the hands. The buttons on the Redmi feel a little bit cheaper when you press them. And yeah, that's a thing. You also get a faster side-mounted fingerprint scanner from the A15, unlike the in-display slower scanner you get with Redmi. Both have the same gloss looking and feeling rear, but again, I like the camera arrangement on the Galaxy A15. Now let's talk about the aspects where the Redmi takes the win as far as this design. There's a slimmer chin for the display on the Redmi, and you get this cutout notch for the front facing camera, and not the old looking dewdrop notch you get from Samsung. You also get the headphone jack retained on the Redmi. There's an IR blaster to control your electronics, and this packs a punch as far as physical features. In terms of durability, the Redmi Note 13 is the clear winner. Starting with the Gorilla Glass protection you get for the display, down to the IP54 rating for splash and dust resistance. These are features you can't find on the Galaxy A15. Personally, I love the design on the Galaxy A15, but that won't take away from the fact that hardware-wise, the Note 13 is simply better. Also, both have hybrid SIM trays, so you only use one SIM and a micro SD card to expand your memory, or just two SIMs without the option to expand your memory on these devices. Now let's talk about the audio quality. At the max volumes for both of the smartphones, I didn't seem to notice a difference or that much a difference between two of them. And this comes as a shock to me because you get a dual stereo speaker configuration from the Redmi for the top and the bottom, and this is just a downfiring speaker from the Galaxy A15. So for this reason of stereo speakers, I'd say the Note wins here because you can easily block the outlet while gaming or consuming media on the Galaxy A14, and that won't be an issue with the Redmi here. But as far as sound quality, they are really close. On the camera side of things, the Redmi Note 13 has a 108 megapixel main sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. While the Samsung here gives you a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 5 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. For their front facing cameras, you get a 16 megapixel for the Note 13 and a 13 megapixel sensor for the Galaxy A15. After several hours of analyzing these smartphones' cameras, I can tell you for a fact that it can be either or, and you'll be fine with these devices. Of course, they have their color profiles, no doubt, but that's more of a style thing than quality. They express the same level of color reproduction and quality, and you won't go wrong with either of the smartphones. Where you start seeing or spotting differences is when you crop in these photos, like zoom into the photos from the smartphones. And that's for both the normal and the high resolution modes on the smartphones, which is 108 megapixels for the Redmi and a 50 megapixel mode for the A15. Now, the A15 always seems to have the sharper images as seen, like more details for some reason, and also the file size was significantly lower. For instance, this photo here for the high resolution mode, you get a 17 megabyte file for the Note 13 and an 11 megabyte file for the Galaxy A15. Also, whenever there's a lot of greens in the photo, the Redmi added a lot more processing, making it look more vibrant than it actually did look in real life. And the Galaxy took a closer to natural approach here. For the front facing camera, there's no doubt I'm picking the Galaxy A15. It has the better skin tones, better dynamic range handling, and less of the plasticky skin tone looking photo. I also did notice that the skin tones and the colors on the Redmi tend to match the Samsung when in portrait mode on this front facing cameras, but that wasn't the case when I took the regular photo on the front facing camera, making me feel like a software update or tuning can resolve that issue with the Redmi on this one. On the video side of things, you should expect a maximum of 1080p videos for the smartphones. They are really close as far as quality and I couldn't really make a peek from that only. Notable differences for the videos include the fact that the Redmi took a little longer to expose like automatically for the subjects, maybe a second longer. It also had more noticeable noise in challenging lighting conditions. But on the flip side, it did better when it comes to video stabilization. The difference is actually night and day. So summarily for the cameras, 
Photos and videos for the rear cameras are almost the same and boils down to personal preference. The A15 has a better front-facing camera, while the Redmi has better stabilization for the videos. So which will you pick as far as the cameras? Tell me in the comment section down there. And if you appreciate the work we put into testing these cameras, like and subscribe to this channel as that will help us a bunch. Thanks. The displays are huge, 6.5 and 6.7 inch for the Galaxy and the Note 13 respectively. Both are AMOLED displays, full HD plus resolutions, and the colors on both are really good and similar. Like they are really alike and that's about where the similarities end. The Redmi takes refresh rate to 120Hz which is 90Hz on the A15. It takes brightness to 1800 nits at peak which is 800 on the A15. You have a Gorilla Glass protection for the Redmi and you can't find that on the A15. There's a cutout notch on the Redmi here and there's a dewdrop notch on the Galaxy A15. It just feels like if Samsung needed solutions to this display, this is the one they should model. And that's something you hardly see about Samsung. I'm not taking away the fact that the A15 has a gorgeous looking display. Heck, both are AMOLED panels that will save on your battery life. But this is basically one of those rare occasions where I would say the Redmi beats Samsung as far as displays. Yeah, this is one of them. Performance is one aspect where the smartphones differ. First off, I have the same memory configuration here, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. But the processors on here are the Snapdragon 680 for Redmi and the Helio G99 from MediaTek for the Galaxy A15. After quite a while of use, you'd notice that the A15 from Samsung is the faster smartphone. Also, I prefer the Android skin on here. You have One UI as against Mi UI from Redmi. Out of the box, you get Android 13 on Redmi here, the Note 13, and you get Android 14 from the A15. Now, software update is something you should expect from these smartphones. And Samsung doesn't disappoint with this four years OS um, update and five years patch updates. I'm also assuming Redmi will give us two years of software updates and four years of security patches for the smartphone. So for longevity, this is the device to pick. As far as benchmarking apps, here are the scores for Geekbench, Antutu, PC Mac for Android, and 3D Mark. When it comes to gaming on the Redmi Note 13 and the Galaxy A15, you get a commendable gaming experience on both. But the A15 seems to be the better with a better processor found here. For instance, I could play PUBG at balanced graphics and medium frame rates on the Note 13, but it did play at HD graphics and high frame rates on the Galaxy A15. Call of Duty was also nicely played and enjoyable on both of these devices, but the A15 is the better device as far as processing. Now let's talk about the batteries here. You get a 5,000 mAh battery for both. These will last you into the next day on average use, but the only reason I'll give the win to the Redmi Note 13 here would be the fact that you have a faster charging speed on here. You can charge this device from zero to 100 in 70 minutes using the 33 watt charger found within the box. You don't have a charger within the box here and the A15 only supports 25 watts fast charging. So when it comes to batteries, this is actually the winner. So here's how I put it. For an extra $10 or 15,000 Naira, you're getting a 33 watt charger with the Redmi Note 13, a better display in the sense that it's brighter with higher refresh rate and Gorilla Glass protection. You have a headphone jack still on those devices retained here, an IR blaster and IP54 water and dust resistance all in this package here. But on the flip side, for $10 less, the A15 doesn't have all those features mentioned earlier, but you have this slightly better front facing camera, a better processor on here, which makes it faster, a longer software update into the future. That's about what you should get here. I think this is better value for money. So based on these features, which would you pick and what matters the most to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and you can check out my reviews on the smartphones here. Koida day.